Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. It's Indie Author Showcase Day today, which means it's time for a fresh batch of self-published fantasy and science fiction authors to talk to you about their books. So settle down, buckle up, and hopefully find some new titles to add to your TBR. Hi everyone, my name is NJ Alexander, and today I'm here to showcase my debut epic fantasy novel, Fogbound. Fogbound stars a history teacher by the name of Zershin Volner, who is under the unfortunate circumstance of being under mind control from a long-dead legendary hero. He is then forced to enlist in the army, and then dragged off to war, where he must do battle for both his homeland and his own mind. Fogbound is a book for those that love that classic, epic fantasy, grand-scale adventures through mountains and caves and forests, and ragtag teams of heroes who must band together to solve a common goal. It's for fans of John Gwynn, those who love Nicholas Eames, and for those who may enjoy a little bit of humor in their fantasy. Again, that is Fogbound by me, NJ Alexander, and I do hope you give it a shot and pick it up. Thank you. I'm award-winning author David Hankins with my novel, Death and the Tax Man, which is about the Grim Reaper trapped in an IRS agent's dying body. He has to regain his powers before he dies and faces judgment for his original sin. Death and the Tax Man started out as an award-winning short story, which won Writers of the Future, Volume 39, and was then later named the best science fiction fantasy short story of 2023 in Critters Readers Poll. I expanded Death and the Tax Man into a full-length novel, which just came out on Tax Day 2024, because, of course, that's April 15th for those lucky people who don't have to deal with the IRS. After sharing an ill-advised cup of tea with IRS auditor Frank Toteman, Grimm finds himself trapped in Frank's life, struggling to deal with the insanities that we deal with every day as humans. Reckless cabbies, love, betrayal, demon hunters, you know, the normal everyday things. But throughout this all, what happens when death isn't there to reap souls? When there's a worldwide epidemic of miraculous survivals, of people surviving things that they should not have survived? Grimm has seen this before. He knows what's coming, and it's not good. Death and Tax Man has been lauded as wildly fun hilarious, and moves like a bat out of hell. If you like reading light-hearted, adventurous, and silly stories about death, uh, this is the one for you. Pick up a copy today. Hello everyone, my name is Claire Trella Hill, and I am an author of gothic romance and romantic fantasy. And today I'm going to talk to you about my debut novel, Black and Deep Desires. And Black and Deep Desires is actually part of a Shakespeare quote. And Shakespeare plays a pretty big role in the novel because the heroine has to ask herself what she's going to do about the vampire in her basement that will not stop quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Black and Deep Desires is a uh, gothic vampire romance and it's set in 1800s Yorkshire. The, the protagonist is a girl named Ophelia. She's about 19 years old and she's been basically neglected by her family in the ancestral uh, family home that's kind of crumbling around her and she really only has her animal companions as constant friends. But when her mad scientist father and her brothers return home with a supernatural experiment in tow, she must decide whether the creature in her cellar is a person that she can save or a monster out for blood. The supernatural kind of bleeds into Victorian England in this sort of part gas lamp, part paranormal, all gothic romance with a broody Shakespeare quoting hero who's got serious toucher and eye vibes. 
And it's really perfect for anyone who just has a burning desire to run across a dark windswept moor in a long white gauzy nightgown. So if you enjoy stories about mad scientists, spooky houses, uh, thunderstorms, thinking about do monsters have souls, uh, family secrets, and dreams that maybe aren't really dreams, then you may enjoy this book. It's a pretty good read for anyone who's longing for some cool fall spooky reads. I hope you enjoy! Hello everybody, my name is J.L. Anderson. I'm excited to introduce you to my novel, Dual Fires. I have a copy of that right here for you and excited to tell you a little bit about this book. So Dual Fires is a fantasy fiction novel set in a magical world where individuals receive their powers and strength from the light and the dark atmosphere around them. In this world, there's a group called Light Breathers. They can breathe in the light and use it for certain things. And then another group called Dark Breathers breathes in the darkness, and they use that to magnify their abilities and so forth. So these two groups have been at war for millennia, and much of that war focuses around some ancient legends of their people. And these two groups believe in essentially the same legend, but they're fighting over its interpretation, what it truly means and what their prophesied hero is uh, coming to do, whether that is to bring peace or ultimately bring destruction. With that backdrop, our story primarily revolves around a young hero and his best friend. This hero is trying to make a name for himself. He's really trying to get out from under the shadow of his family's past and, um, like I say, make a name for himself, and his friend is there to support him throughout, though their dynamics change and, and really grow a lot through this adventure as they stumble into world issues that are much larger than themselves. So uh, I think you'll enjoy this book if you like adventure, if you are interested in magic systems that uh, are, show unique ways to interact with their world and, and the elements around them. And if you enjoy stories about legends, especially with twists on maybe your classic legend stories where two groups are really fighting to decide what legend really means and what the right way to interpret it would be. So I had a lot of fun writing this story. I hope you all enjoy reading it as well. It's available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback audiobook is available as well. And like I say, I hope you're able to pick up a copy. Hope you enjoy exploring this world that I have had a lot of fun creating for you. So thank you. Hi, my name is Bethany and I write under the pen name BSH Garcia. And I am here to talk about uh, my most recent release in my epic fantasy series, The Heart of Quinaria. Uh, I recently released this novella called From the Depths back in February. It is the second standalone novella in the series. Uh, it is best read, in my opinion, after you have read the first full-length book of Thieves in Shadows, but um, I have heard from other readers that it does work as a standalone. It is an origin story of sorts for two characters in that series. Um, this one is unique in the setting. It has some very strong pirate vibes um, and it's uh, located on an island and then in the ocean uh, there are a lot of great beasts and um, mythos and a hunt for an ancient artifact and of course uh, heavy doses of emotional trauma and betrayal. Uh, it follows uh, two younger protagonists, uh, which is was refreshing and fun for me to write. And um, despite it being a shorter uh, book at only 160 pages, it packs a pretty strong emotional punch, uh, has some great arcs for our characters and some uh, page turning moments. So I hope you'll give this one a go. Uh, fun little bonus for this is uh, the events in this book uh, segue perfectly into the prologue for the upcoming book in the series of Love and Loss, which we'll be releasing this fall. Um, thank you so much for your time, and again, uh, From the Depths, and it's available in all formats on Amazon.
Hey guys, I want to tell you about my new book, Paths to Empire's Ends. And that's right, it's got an apostrophe in a strange place, and it'll give you a little clue as to what's going on in the book. This is a grim, dark fantasy romp. It's 30,000 words, so you will tear through it. Um, my writing has been compared sometimes positively to Glenn Cook and Steven Erickson, uh, so if you like that, hopefully you'll love this. Um, when indifferent priest and degenerate gambler Thanatos' debt becomes more than he can pay, he finds his feet set on a path which could lead to Empire's Ends. But this is fast, it's brutal, um, it is ram-packed full of people that are either trying to do their best and failing, or uh, not trying to do their best at all. Cool, have a good day. Hi everyone, my name is C.L. Jarvis, and today I'm showcasing my historical fantasy book, Dark City Rising, which is coming out at the end of May. Um, it's in the same world as my Edinburgh Doctrine series book, although this is a prequel slash standalone. Um, you don't need to have read my other books to enjoy this one, and um, it can be read either before or after any of the Edinburgh Doctrine's books. Um, and this story takes place um, a couple of decades before the Edinburgh Doctrine series starts, and it tells the story of how Professor William Cullen and Joseph Black came to rid Edinburgh of um, its dark magicians. Um, if you like, um, like sprawling historical fantasy novels that are set in the 18th century. Um, the Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield and The Baroque Cycle by Neil Stevenson have kind of similar scope and aims to this book. It um, features magic based on um, both like science and medicine based as well as the rival dark magic system which has a lot of sigils and um like creepy runes yeah so if you like like big sprawling historical fantasies that are very atmospheric um set in an interesting time period and dealing with um the Enlightenment and the Scientific Re Revolution, I think you will enjoy this book, so please check it out. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jay Tallsquall, and with Pride Month just around the corner, I wanted to reintroduce you to my high fantasy series, A Time of Falcons and Roses, by highlighting the second book in the series, Promise of the Betrayer's Dagger, which came out back in October. Promise of the Betrayer's Dagger focuses on Osman, who we met in the first book, and is told from his point of view. It picks up from the beginning of his exile, takes us through his startling return and announcement at the end of book one, and then advances the plot of the whole series. Osman's journey dives deep into his Oldani culture and their relationship with their emotions, which manifest as a tactile sensation called keel. The manifestations of keel are as real as any interactions with a physical object to the Oldani, so the stabbing pain of guilt is not just a metaphor. Asman's exile forces him to face the emotional demons left from his childhood, unravel his father's secret legacy, and decide whether he wants to embrace his fate or leave it all behind. Promise of the Betrayer's Dagger continues in the tradition of Legacy of the Vermilion Blade, taking place in a low-spice, LGBTQIA plus inclusive world, focusing on relationships, not only between people and families, but also our relationships with ourselves. I'll leave you with an overarching theme that inspired the book. Sometimes to find yourself, first, you have to find your family. You can find Promise of the Betrayer's Dagger on Amazon, and Legacy of the Vermilion Blade can be found there as well, and now as an audiobook on Audible. Thank you.
Thank you so much to all of the authors who've taken the time to film a video and send it over to me for inclusion in today's showcase. I hope you all enjoyed listening to them talking about their books and you can check out more details using the book and author links in the box below this video. If you're a self-published fantasy or science fiction author and you want to appear in a future one of these videos, check out the showcase page on my website, dominishbooks.com, and you can find all of the details you need there to get a video over to me. That's all I've got for you today, so thank you very much for joining me. I hope to see you in the next one sometime soon. Until then, as always, though, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.